for the second best of five. It's time for the Protoss hero parting up against Sniper, the guy with the big gun who's picking off Protosses. If you are up against a Zerg player who has a 70% win ratio against Protoss, then you know that you are in trouble. He is in trouble, man. We just saw Leenok get taken out by life. But look at how big that Zealot is compared to the Hydros and the Marine. Yeah, that Zealot is definitely a little bit intimidating, he but a so are Sniper's statistics against Kroda. 70% is pretty crazy, but 35 wins against 15 losses. Harding, on the other hand, this guy, he has made it happen over and over again. He's the one Protoss who just defies Zerg. Yeah, look at his win rate, man. As a Protoss, having a 100% win rate versus Zerg on Abyssal City is pretty awesome. He just played that one game, he did the Immortal All-In and he won it. He's like, no, not even Abyssal City could stop me. And you know, the first two maps that we have are actually pretty decent for parting. This is Entune Valley and Cloud Kingdom, two good maps. Cloud Kingdom being the map that Hero always will choose against the Zerg player. Yeah. Entune Valley is a traditionally strong map for Protoss and one that Parting showed us a bit of innovation yesterday. He was able to dodge. You know, yesterday he only had one Zerg map to face, and today as well, he's only got one. Yeah. He doesn't have Velshir Vestige. He's got, uh, of course, the uh, Abyssal City to, to deal with. It's on his on his list. Here is who a sniper has killed in order to get here. He took out Seed, Rain, and Violet. Losing, though, the best of three to life. So. If he advances to the finals against life, he's going to have to play the rematch series. Then he gets the revenge match, but he didn't drop a single map against Protoss, which is really, really important here to note. On the other hand, I said it yesterday, a Sniper watching those games between uh, Harding and his opponent was probably just thinking, okay, how do I prepare against this exactly? Yeah. That was really interesting what Parting played here, and Parting's patience, especially in those fights, using those Colossi, not even in the fights until the last second when those Eruptors were suddenly gone or were already killed. Then he used the rest of his army. If you watched yesterday, you know what I'm talking about. It was amazing. Yep. Now here is Parting. You can see who he beat. He was able to 2-0 MVP, but basically in that group, who didn't 2-0 MVP? He was able to take out Hero 2-1, though. He lost to Leenok but did end up taking the win against DRG in the final set, which was pretty sick. He wants to go to the final now. He did it in the round of six. Can he do it in the round of four? We have him up against one of the strongest Zerg players these days, the Code S champion, season five. Sniper has done it against Tian in a ZVZ in the finals. Now he's up against Parting once again. They faced each other in Code S in the group stage, where Sniper eliminated Parting. But now, this is a different tournament, this is a different day, this is different, that's a fight. You know, Parting loves to talk trash in the yeah. lobby, but I mean, he's, he's trying to use that strategy on Sniper right now, and Sniper actually, most of the time, I found in the chat right now, is just replying with question marks. Uh, and I think that's actually pretty classy. They're making it seem like he has no idea what he's talking about. And this is pretty cool. Guys, I could not have imagined a cooler round of four. Sniper! The GSL champion, the reigning champion, up against Parting, the world champion, here at the GSL Blizzard Cup for 2012. We're jumping into map number one in Tomb Valley right now. Starting on Entombed Valley in our second semi-final here at the Blizzard Cup 2012 is a monster. This guy has the sickest win ratio ever against Protoss. He's starting for Team MVP. He is... MVP Sniper! Standing on top of a mountain with a big gun. Shoots Hydralis spines. Yeah. His opponent to the bottom left. For the team, Startail, the Pink Panther, as Kaldor calls him, he is... Party, party! Starting in orange today. Yeah, today without the pink. Doesn't have pink mouth, nor the pink color. But he has the skills, and he showed it yesterday. Can he do it again, though? This is another Zerg versus Protoss that he has to play. And talking about Sniper, I mentioned his ratio against Protoss. 70% win ratio, winning 35 games, only dropping 15. 
And just to give you a bit of an idea, he took out Rain in the group stage with a 2-0. He took down Seed with a 2-0. Before that, he was successful against Hero without dropping a map in the best of three. He defeated Huck. He defeated MC. He defeated Todd. And the farther down you go in uh, his match list, the more wins against Protoss you just discover. He had another 2-0 against Parting not too long ago. He 2-0'd SOS. He won against Seed again. That was back in November. He took out Naniwa at IPL. He was once more successful against Parting. And the last loss is actually against Squirtle in September. That's the last time that he lost against a Protoss player. That is pretty crazy. And Parting, it just shows that he has such a tough task ahead of him. This is such a challenge. It, it really is. He starts on a good map, though. Yeah. Next is first into Forge. In Tomb Valley, let's talk about why this is a good map. The reason why it's a good map for Protoss is because it's really easy to take a third base. Unlike almost every other map in the map pool right now, I would say Daybreak is, and Cloud Kingdom are the only other two that really are decent for taking a third base, but this one is even better than those. Unlike those other maps like Abyssal City, you can take a third base here, wall it off, and hold it, and there's nothing the Zerg can do. It's also really hard for the Zerg to scout if you're really taking that third base, or if you're faking it, you're gonna hit with a two base timing because it's hard for a Zerg to hold their third base against a two base timing, but what if you just take your third and then hit a three base timing? Even the late game is not that comfortable for Zerg here, but I would say that if you get there, the Zerg starts to get some advantages in this matchup, but it's so hard to survive. We saw Parting actually go just yesterday on this map with a fast mothership yeah. off of two bases into the third. Then he hit with the timing with Vortex. He also drew the Corruptor fire away from his Colossi. He looked really strong on this map. He showed us something different. We've seen a lot of timings on this map. We have these gateway timings that you can hit an Immortal push on two bases with the correct positions is also possible. You can go for the late game. Uh, that there are so many different timings and different strategies that you can use here. Protoss tries to be a bit more aggressive in this matchup to hit before the Brood Lords out. But Parting just showed yesterday some Something that we haven't seen this often on this map. With the early mothership, he was able to dominate Violet, and that was a really, really cool thing that he just pulled out of the head. Now he's up against an opponent who has seen the strategy, who is very, very accomplished in the matchup, who has the experience, and who wants to go into the finals here. He is not only the champion of Code S, but he wants to be the champion of the Blizzard Cup. He has to face, if he wins here, another Startail player. If Parting is going down today, then life can avenge him. But this is just such a crazy series. And after yesterday, everyone is hoping for another epic PvZ by Parting. I think Parting's gonna give it to us. I think we are going to see a very aggressive build by Sniper. Look at this early lair tech that he's got. He's wow. got a very fast lair and he's facing Robo. He's taking a lesson from Celia, I feel. 5.30 tech into there. Not bad. Yeah, very quick, not bad at all. Before speed. We may see Anitis, but I think more likely we're going to see Mutilus. He needs to take his third and fourth gas if he's going for Mutilus, though. If you're facing an Immortal push, which is something that can happen on this map, we'll soon see if Parting is going into the third base. But if he does, he's already using a bit of a different timing. Usually you do it on gateways and then you head into your tech. But Parting could do it with a Twilight Council as well. Yeah, he's also taken his, his third and fourth gas before gate, so I think yep. we're going to see a third. But if he goes into a normal Immortal push, one of the strategies that and his T used when the Immortal Push first emerged was going into a fast mutilist tech on trying to hit it with a good timing. And Sniper with this very early layer could well go into a spy attack. I here. think he's going to, he's but going to Nidus. Oh, Nidus now goes down, but the Overlord gets sniped at the bottom. He's got one more Overlord though, yeah, like at the back of Parting's at the back of Parting's natural, but there's another one at the bottom right. Ah, oh, you're right, there is actually another one there. So if he he has two opportunities for Nidus. Uh oh. Pylon gets put down. Nice. There's only one Overlord can get in and do this. There is one dark spot, and he had. Oh my God, Parting! Are you really dropping another building to the right just to make sure that you have the vision? No, not yet. No, he's not doing it. He has no idea. The links are coming through. Oh, uh, Wolf! This is so close. Is he dropping? No, he doesn't see it. No, he goes to make an additional gate, and he's moving across the map. He starts to destroy the rocks. If he goes down again, if he goes down with another probe, there we go. Does he drop the Nidus? Not yet. He has the vision. He will, he's going to see it. He is going to see it. The Overlord, does he see the building? I think he does. There are the Immortals. But the only thing that Parting has to do is as soon as the Nidus pops out, he needs to pull his probes and take it down. There it is. It. Where is it? Oh, it's had his natural. He does see it. That, that was actually not a good place to put it. Yeah, Captain Obvious just said hello. That was pretty weird. 
There's the Spire. He goes into Spire, but this is Sniper with a very desperate move. He's right, like, oh, God, this doesn't work. He had his hopes on the Nidus. So now all he has to do is put pylons on the right side of his base to make sure there's no other Nidus and then move across the map. The Spire is too late to defend against the Immortals, I feel. We are going to see the push that made Parting famous in this matchup. He's putting so much soul into it. Once again, it's Genki Dama time. Protoss players all around the world are lending him his stra their strength. Here comes Parting. He's moving out. He is blocking the wall. He's making sure that no counter attack is coming through here. Harding is on the move. Everything that he has set up in his main base will spot Anitus. He's got a great coverage of his main. The Warp Prism flies. Those links can't chase him. He probably should just let the Stalker go, but he is a kind for us. He wanted to at least try to make the attempt to save him. Warp Prism is ready. Warps and some Zealots. Everything is set to victory. Sniper does not even have a Roach Warren. He's got 81 lings, but Parting is warping in more and more Zealots. He's got the sentries. Plus one is done, and there is not a single Roach. Only Zerglings. Here come the Force Fields. They're perfect. Not a single ling gets in and even traps some of the lings. The Queen gets trapped on the high ground with the vision he has of that War Prism. Parting comes in. Four Mutalists are not enough. Sniper is already down in supply. Parting is going to crush him here. There is nothing to stop the pain train. He is moving in. Immortals everywhere. Even the here pylon. come a few Mutalists, but as soon as he sees them, we will have a lot of Stalkers being warped in. There should not be enough time for Sniper to make this happen. Absolutely not. The hatchery is already gone. He's going up into the main base. The drones are falling. One Mutalist taking some damage as it spawns. He doesn't have the ability to counterattack with a Nidus. There's nothing he can do. Parting is just going to walk up his ramp and kill him. Parting is on the move right now. He's moving into the main base. Bye bye, Nidus. The block at the bottom of the ramp, trapping those Zerglings. Here come the Mutalists. The sentries are attacking them one by one, and the next warp in will have a lot of. It doesn't even come to the warp in. GG. Sniper so flustered by that, he doesn't even type his GG. Makes a type typo twice on that GG. Harding takes a sip of water and he says, you know what, that was the best map for me to take a third base on, but that was not the plan. I'm going to keep you guessing. Harding having a good defense against that nice, but I feel like Sniper's positioning was really weird on that. I think the better choice is definitely with Ovo at the bottom right. You know what I mean? Well, he didn't even go to see if there were any buildings yeah, at the at the natural. But it didn't matter anymore. The uh, gateway saw it. As soon as the gateway finished, he saw the position at the bottom right. So it was just a situation where the strategy couldn't work anymore. It was a loss-loss situation for Sniper. There was no place in the entire base where he could place down that Nidus network anymore. Harding would have at least seen a glimpse of it. And Sniper just tried. He was already in a bad spot. But this was also a little bit of a wake-up call for Parting. It worked well, but it was a str it just showed Parting that Sniper is not afraid to take a chance. Yeah. It didn't work for Sniper, but Parting knows now exactly, okay, I have to be ready for everything. Parting. His, his type is, is chatting and just... He's, he's relentless. He's immediately, as soon as the lobby comes in, uh, Sniper says Sugoyo to him, and he says, what was that? Well, Reply. it was Sniper taking a risk. If it doesn't work, you look a little bit silly, but if it works, you are the king of the world. And uh, Harding, he saw it, he identified it, and uh, Sniper could not stop the push, but Sniper did it on a map that is traditionally good for Protoss. Yeah. Now it's time for Cloud Kingdom. Blizzard Cup 2012, map number two, Sniper.